I gotta say, I was certainly surprised going into this. I'm definitely not a manga gatekeeper, but when you've been reading something for about four and a half years, you want it done right. You want to be able to say that an anime studio actually did a faithful adaptation. And that's truly rare these days. You don't get a lot of perfect adaptations. Not everything could be as perfect as Spy X Family. But most of the time, you at least want a good one. Besides the etchy shenanigans, this is still a really good manga with great characters and well-detailed action scenes. So naturally, I'm a little skeptical going into episode one because as much as I want them to bring their A-game to the spicy scenes, I want everything else to be done well, like using great animation for all the character arcs. Let me be the first to say, I was not disappointed. We got an episode that hooked us in just like chapter one in the manga did. We got the backstory on the world of Mato, got to meet some of the girls in the background. We got to see Yuki's resolve of wanting to be a hero. And we got plenty of magnificent scenes of Kyoka being the baddest bitch in the world. Some of my favorite things about this episode were scenes dealing with Kyoka. She's a force of nature in the manga and you gotta admit that she did a damn thing in the anime. Just like I said in my last video talking about this series, you either gonna fall in love with Kyoka or Tenka. And right now, we don't have my baby girl Tenka here yet, so Kyoka's definitely gonna steal the show for a few episodes. And listen, if my intuition is correct, Tenka will shut the internet down when her episode comes. But before I get too deep in my thoughts, I wanna talk about some of the changes from the manga. I gotta say, the studio subdued Yuki just a little bit. My boy was a little more mad in the manga about his classmates basically treating them like shit, which I thought was an interesting change. Cause here in anime, he was a lot more somber and willing to help his classmates, dumping their work on them, instead of him getting bullied about it. It's not a major change, but in the manga, it sets up why Yuki wants to be a hero so much. Because he's always looked down on, especially in a world where only women get the powers, and men live life on hard mode, as Yuki puts it. It's not the end of the world, but it's, it's just small characterization choices that shape personality. And what we do not want is an adaptation where Yuki is a self-insert character just because of the subject matter. Yeah, it's gonna cater to certain kinks, but Yuki definitely has a good personality on his own without us having to insert ourselves into the character. Besides that, I think they did a pretty good job with Yuki, even if you've never read the manga. You're gonna still feel compelled to follow his story and his journey of becoming a hero. And I think we got a good amount of that. Kyoko, on the other hand, I think they put their foot on the gas with her. Her character design, her movements, her voice actress, everything about her was spot on. If you love strong and powerful women in your anime, look no further. We got the new babe on the block. This is one of my babies and I just wanna make sure it's done with care. And while we are talking about movement, I gotta say the animation wasn't as bad as I was expecting. I still got hype when I watched the trailer, but it still left me with a lot to be desired. But now I understand why they pushed it back so much. It gave the animators a chance to neat things up a little more. We've seen horrible CG, but this right here wasn't as bad. I understand the animators need to cut corners sometimes, and I personally have decided not to go so hard when I see bad CG, because lately Japan has been truly killing these animators. And trust me, I love anime just as much as everybody else, but not at the expense of some of these animators. So I'm not gonna really flame them for that anymore unless it's incredibly egregious. For this, I think all the Shuki still look cool in this particular universe. I'm gonna grade it on a curve based on what I expect Shuki to look like in the world of Mato. And honestly, a lot of the action scenes make up for the lack of CG. One thing I gotta give a shout out to is the director. I think he did a good job for what we got. I feel like it had a good flow of action. We were only getting still panels in the manga, but we were still able to follow the flow of action in it. And that was one of the major things I was worried about going into this, because I want the action scenes to be a star just like I want the etchy scenes to be good. So I have to say, there's a lot to look forward to now. Another small manga change was the fact that in the manga, we didn't really get to see the three girls until the end of the chapter. But the anime decided to sprinkle them in throughout the episode to basically give the anime onlys a chance to see them sooner, which I think was a good choice. And the girls are fantastic, especially my girl Shushu, which episode two will focus more on her. And she's definitely one of my top favorite characters in the series. 
It's going to allow newcomers to be able to see the girls in their natural habitat, as well as their different attributes and abilities. We got to pretty much see them as a unit, and I thought it was a nice change. Let's talk about the music. Shout out to the composer, Kota Yamamoto. Hey man, you did your thing with the score. There were some moments where I thought I was listening to the My Hero soundtrack. Come to find out, he actually worked on the final season of Attack on Titan with Hiroyuki Swano. Now I see where you're getting your chops from, bro. If the OST continues to be this good throughout all 12 episodes, I'm gonna have to add this to my library of favorites. It gets you just hype enough, and it followed well with some of the good animation. Hey man, Bravo 7 Arcs, I can't complain yet. The OP and the ED were phenomenal as well, pure bops. OP over here sounded like I'm about to watch some straight to rags the richest shonen story, and then we got a sweet cotton candy ED that the studios knew what the fuck they were doing. Making a tank of focus ED? Hey, whoever at Seven Arts decided on that, give that man an award. Tinka is the most popular character in Japan, and rightfully so. And now, after we got all that filler out of the way, we can talk about what we all been waiting for. And while this episode was really tame, we're really not gonna get anything spicy until later on. We get a pretty nice reward scene, and I'm glad the studio didn't pull any punches. We actually got to see the kiss in full effect, and I thought they did well with the execution, lighting, framing, and all I can hope is that when it's time, that they'll up the ante and they'll pull no punches. I need these reward scenes to be as nasty as shit. <laughs> but for real, from what we've seen, I still think we're in good hands when the true culture finally arrives. Fingers are still crossed. But seriously, I know I'm babbling and babbling and we only really got one episode, but like I said at the beginning, this right here is really dear to my heart, just like Comey was, and I just want this to be done right. After what I just saw, I honestly can't say I have any doubts like I had earlier last year. I don't think this would be the best adaptation, but I think it would be a solid one. I don't want to speak too soon because we have a lot more story to get into. We have a lot more characters to be introduced from the OP alone without spoiling too much. I hope we get a chance to see them in these 12 episodes. I probably should have gave myself a little bit more time to figure out my thoughts. As soon as the episode was finished, I just wanted to give my raw initial thoughts. And all I can truly say is, well done. I really thought that this was going to be a pile of shit. Because make no mistake, the manga is godly. The art in there is so good. And I just want it to also be reflected in the anime. But we still got 11 more episodes to go. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. Y'all already know what the deal is. It's your boy Kamari. Take it easy.